I want to challenge you on ideas around academics today in my talk. One of the things that I am here at the University of East Anglia is being senior lecturer in film and television studies, which some people, of course, regard as a Mickey Mouse degree. And I want to precisely challenge that idea that film and television studies or media studies in general is not necessarily Mickey Mouse degree. And I also want to uh, challenge this idea of academics having this idea or people having ideas around academics as people living in ivory towers of hermits. Actually, we can do different by making things a little bit differently. And I want to give you two examples from my own experiences today in teaching and in also filmmaking. Not that I have ever been a filmmaker before this film that I'm going to share with you today. I've always been on the theory side of things. But I want to kind of challenge those ideas while at the same time talking a little bit about this concept of voice. And I based the title of my talk on Malala Yousafzai's um, very great, of course, quotation. One child, one teacher, one book, one pen can change the world. And with my students, I kind of try to do that. If not changing the world, we kind of try to contribute to it, even in a little kind of way. And I want to give those examples, share those examples with you today, to encourage you to think about doing things a little bit more differently in your daily lives, and sometimes with absolutely not much effort either. Just passion, perhaps. Back in 2011, I developed this new, brand new module at the time, which was first of its kind in the UK, called Women, Islam and Media. And you can imagine that it was a very sensitive topic. There were modules about women and Islam, modules about Islam and media at different universities in different parts of the UK or around the world, but nothing really brought these three aspects together. And the university decided that it would be a great idea to do a press release because it had Islam and women in it, you know. So we did. And boy, did we receive media attention. From Huffington Post to The Guardian to, for some reason that I cannot discover yet, Marie Claire. Um, and they all were really great in identifying the first course of its kind kind of module that I offered and they were very generous in their giving space, in their papers, and so on. But then I've learned one thing. Never, ever read the comments below a news piece that is written about you, particularly if it's to do with Islam and women and media. Not that I'm religious at all, not that I have to justify that position, really, but I was called an alien terrorist who came to this country to promote Islamist ideologies to our kids. I was kind of proud of that. <laughs> <laughs> then I was accused for invading our universities by teaching fantasy. I'm kind of proud for the fact that I managed to copy and paste these comments, put them on a PowerPoint slide to share them with my students in the classroom to explain to them why, actually, we needed to study this module. And in fact, as you will have seen in the pictures behind me um, in the previous slide, every time the media picked up on it, even though the module itself was very much of a critique of how women, particularly when it comes to Islam, were represented in the media, they almost always used the same image of a veiled woman in a burqa representing or putting those stereotypes back into place. But what I want to do, what we did actually as a class, lots of, I mean, the module has been running from 2011 till almost now, and lots of students have been coming and taking the module. But what have they done that was a bit different? Together with me, we worked collectively. They made media. Rather than critiquing media, they went and made a documentary about the importance of this particular topic that were, of course, inspired by the module's content. The media professionals came to the classroom because of those press releases. And they were talking about the ways in which they were representing the media. And BBC Asian Network, in fact, did a radio program with the students, interviewed them about their experiences of being on the course. 
So that was quite an interesting kind of initiative. Norfolk and Suffolk constabularies visit the classroom every so often. Almost every year they do come and talk about some of the issues we pick up on and how police, in this case, deals with them. Things like forced marriage, things like um, honour-based abuse and so on. And what I would like to remind us, all of us today, is the importance of collecting people in any journey that you take, in different roles that you have, different, with your different identities that you have. Really collect those people. And I'm going to come back why, to why it's important to collect these people in a minute when, it, when I talk about growing up married. And then things got a little bit bigger within the module. I got personally asked to provide a report, contribute to a report by the House of Lords on British uh, religion and um, belief in British public life, and they wanted me to contribute on the area of women in Islamic media. Having heard from the press attention that the module received, this was back in 2015, I didn't want to do it alone. I thought it would be good to bring students back into the game, and actually they turned their own assignments into responding to this report. And then in the end, we were all cited in the final report as well, which was quite a, an exciting journey to respond to national policy and therefore having some kind of impact, taking the teaching and learning experiences from, uh, you know, from within the classroom to outside it, but not je just generally within the campus, but nationally at the level of policy. And then it led us, three of us in fact, at the university to be funded by um, the Arts and Humanities Research Council, in fact, on a module, on a, on a project, not a module, I'm obsessed about modules, on a research project about British Muslim values, which gave cameras to Muslim individuals around the region of East Anglia so that they could go and make films about their own experiences of how they understand Britishness and this concept, very problematic, in fact, concept of British values. So these thing, things kind of lead to each other, different things. And it's important to collect people for reasons I'm going to come back to in a minute. 2015, I'm sitting in my ivory tower, um, typing up theories around women and Turkey, where I originally come from, hence the funny accent. Um, and I'm thinking, I'm, I was writing an article about forced marriage, child brides and so on in Turkey. And then I suddenly had this thought. I said, everything is fine with my work, but there's something intrinsically missing from what I do, which is women. I'm categorizing women as a single entity. I'm talking about women in Turkey. Well, there are different gazillions of different types of women in Turkey that need to be considered. So I thought, you know what? I'm going to drop theory for a minute and I'm going to see if I can get for free a camera from the TV studio, which is just one of the sponsors of this event as well, UVA TV, get a TV camera, get the support of students who may be interested in contributing to this project with me, and make a short documentary film about forced marriage rather than theorizing forced marriage. So I was shifting, in fact, from critiquing media, talking media, to activism, feminist activism, in terms of making media. So I got a camera, literally with zero budget, absolutely no money whatsoever, apart from a ticket to Turkey. Went to Turkey in 2015, July, filmed, talked to four women who told me about their own memories of what it meant for them to be child brides, brides forced into marriage. And I was fascinated, I was powerless, and I thought, this is, this, these voices need to be heard, and these stories need to be shared. So I brought those stories back, together with my students, who worked as edi editors, uh, who worked as dire assistant directors, executive producers on the project. We built up a little team, and with absolutely zero budget, we made Growing Up Married, which was released in 2016, 
not in big theatres or anything. It did go to LA though, which I'm proud to say. But it went from, the news went from New York Times to Al Jazeera to Sky to BBC and so on. And it started receiving attention. And this is the point where I want to talk t a tiny bit about the importance of collecting people on the way when we're doing things. When I was in touch with Norfolk Constabulary, for example, to do with women, Islam and media, when I was in touch with different media outlets, when I was working on that particular course, they all came back together to support this project. And the media attention this received is an evidence of that. But then Norfolk Constabulary suggested something much more exciting, which has been going on for the last couple of years. They decided to use the film because they needed to hear voices of women who have actually really experienced this, because women don't necessarily talk out about these kind of experiences of domestic violence, sexual violence, and so on. In this case, forced marriage or being a child bride. They decided that they would use the film in their training of police officers, safeguarding children unit, forced marriage unit, and uh, NHS professionals and other healthcare professionals. and something to do with women in Turkey, just four of them, their stories became incredibly impactful and powerful for policies in the UK. So it's really important for us to perhaps see and understand how significant it is for films to travel and doing things differently through films rather than sitting in ivory towers and typing behind our computers, theories that only very limited people, very, very limited number of people would, would perhaps read. As I said, House of Lords connection was another one that wasn't to be missed. <coughs> Westminster asked me to go and do a talk at the House of Lords about the film, so I introduced it there at the House of Lords at West Westminster as well. And again, it, it was in line with the upcoming new bill on forced marriage, something that you wouldn't necessarily imagine one would do, working on Middle Eastern media and gender politics and so on. So what I would like to do before I finish is to show you the teaser of the film, which should take about four minutes and I'll uh, wrap up afterwards. Şiler bek gibi daldım göllere. Yeşil ördek gibi daldım göllere. The voice you hear is the voice of Leyla, who was 14 when she was forced to marry. She tells me she stopped singing as a result of the domestic violence she experienced during her marriage. Today is the first time in years that she is singing. <laughs> Çok kötü, işkence. Bir oğlum oldu, yedi aylık daha bileydim. Evde su yoktu, çeşme yok, o yok, bu yok. Sokakta su taşıdım, eve geldim. Yedi aylık karnımda düştü çocuk. Bir daha atasına hamile kaldım, bir tane kız çocuğum yine dünyaya geldi. On sekiz günlüktü, bakamadım, koydum. Yanımda hani sabah kalktım, ölüm oldu. Dört buçuk sene falan nişanlı kaldık o kişiyle, 15-14 yaşlarındaydı. Evden dışarı çıkarmaz oldular, yok oraya gitme, buraya gitme. Tabi de okumadığım için, sürekli evde olduğum için o kadar cahilim ki, o kadar yani hiçbir şekilde yetiştirilmedim yani daha doğrusu. İşte onlar istedikleri şey de olmayınca benim bekaretim elastik olduğu için kan gelmedi. Ve ben kan gelmeyince ben dışarı çıktı bu kadın. Bana kadın almışsınız kız değil. 
Ondan sonraki hayatım çok kötü başladı. Tanınırız diye hemen beni Diyarbakmana götürdüler. Kızlık muayenesi yapıldı. These voices you hear are the voices of child brides recollecting their stories as adults. Sebepten dolayı yani etrafım dedikodusu artık o kadar sıktı ki dedim artık yemin ettim yani bu evlilik yani şey de suçludur ona da bir şey diyemez mi? Kaynana ne kaybeder yani bir şey diyemez mi? Çocuğunu bile emdiremez mi? From the time you started watching this clip until now, 81 girls across the world became child brides. Okay. Right, so thank you very much for sharing that with me. And um, what I would like to end with is that academics have got this reputation of being hermits living in ivory towers. Film and television studies have got this reputation as being Mickey Mouse degrees, and I wanted to precisely challenge that. Film and television studies is important. Teaching is very inspirational, in fact, very powerful and impact impactful if we take it outside the classroom. And the concept of voice is really important. Because through my work, perhaps, if it, I have done anything, it's about giving voice to students, enabling students to voice their own concerns, either in the classroom, but mainly outside it at the level of national policies. But also through films, doing theory is valuable. But at the same time, doing practice of that theory is even more valuable and film travels, and more films travel, more voices we do get to hear. And you never know how important and significant, in fact, it will be for Turkish women's voices, filmed somewhere a couple of years ago by somebody, some academic, and how impactful it would be in the UK for policies about teaching officers, teaching healthcare professionals in terms of what it means to be a child bride, what it means to be forced into marriage. And I'm very proud that students, my students, have been part of that journey with me today. And I want to leave you with that thought of getting a camera in your hands and talking to people and hearing different stories from different people. And you never know where that journey is going to take you. Thank you. <laughs>